Today, I'm going to talk a lot about energy. We are a metals company, but we're in this fascinating intersection of critical and battery metals with the energy sector. And if I could ask you to think with an open mind, might vanadium in particular, because of its unique supply chain attributes and the vanadium flow battery thematic, might it be something that yields an outcome where the value of vanadium in our deposit is thought about in terms of dollar per megawatt hour terms as opposed to the traditional dollar per ton terms? Might we actually have a resource on hand that can pump out 1.1 gigawatt hours equivalent of battery capacity as opposed to the 12,000 tons V205 that we traditionally think of it? I'd like to convince you of three things today, if I can, and I uh, really re um, have gratitude for you listening to this. Um, first of all, there is a ridiculous need for long duration storage across the world. I'm going to run through a couple of case studies. Long duration storage is the 8, 10, and 12 hours of storage that we need to continue on the journey of the energy transition. Secondly, I'd like to convince you that vanadium flow batteries are a proven commercially competitive technology. They've been connected to the grid for almost 20 years. They're a 40 year old technology that they are coming into their own as a really good solution for that really big long duration market. In terms of the blue ocean strategy, what that means is we think we can grow into that space at a as a metals and energy company profitably and rapidly. Last, why AVL? I'd like to convince you that we have significant competitive advantage across the entire supply chain, and that merits this strategy where our tier one mining asset produces vanadium, we have midstream capability in place, and the downstream strategy is coming together. And last point on Peter's point is partnerships are gonna turn out to be a really transformative outcome for us. So why vanadium? Why am I making these assertions to you? It is different than other battery metals, and here's the key difference. 50% of the value of these commercially proven batteries or more, depending on the duration, is the vanadium content. And therefore, uh, companies that have access to volume, price, and quality of vanadium oxides stand a chance to have a really significant competitive advantage. This is different from many other technologies, including lithium ion, and it translates into great outcomes like lots of local content, but broadly, it gives you access to a technology supply chain that makes a lot of sense and that you can participate in value levels not thought of in other commodities. So on my first point, long duration storage is needed. This is part of the thesis. Here's an example in California being a very high renewables penetration state. And you can see here that batteries are doing a pretty good job of moving electrons from the day to the night with solar energy there. But what you also see is there's still seven hours of overhang where over 50% of California's energy still comes from hydrocarbons. Solar power is continuing to be a low cost of energy source. The only way that that transition continues is with long duration technologies. And today I'll keep trying to convince you that vanadium flow batteries will play a big role there. And indeed they are playing a big role in places like California and China already. Closer to home, we have a really good case study here, good or bad, depending if you're a Victorian. Um, what this story tells you is a day in July, we had something like eight gigawatts of demand. There's four gigawatts of solar installed in Victoria. It only contributed 5% of the energy on this particular day. In the meantime, we had four gigawatts of expensive brown coal propping up the energy demand side. The only way this equation gets solved with renewables is with long duration technologies. The two or three hour batteries that we have in place need to keep going, but we also need big movements on the long duration side. Why should flow batteries fill that space then? Um, first and foremost, they're a proven technology. They have been grid connected for almost 20 years. They're proven in a sense that they are being installed, operated at massive scale in places like China. And importantly, and I think a standout feature here, is they last a long time. Reputable manufacturers will get behind these batteries and warranty them for 20 years with less than 1% degradation. The energy partners we are talking to model these batteries on a 50 year asset life. And that puts it in the same camp in our terms of bankability with gas fired power stations. The cost competitiveness is always important and this is why we are getting stronger and stronger conviction. 
we believe the le levelized cost of storage, which in the energy sector means life cycle cost, as in how much value is this going to add across its life cycle, how competitive is it? We think already we're competitive with this benchmark, which is lithium ion, and there's all the reasons in the world to think with scale, as in manufacturing costs coming down, and then recognition of that 50-year life that the LCOS calculation drives you to an even more compelling uh, position, especially for those long duration opportunities. Are they actually proven? I would challenge anyone to go look around and, and find great examples. Here's three, Japan, China, and the US are adopting these. China is leading and they have uh, installations that come up to some, uh, let's call it 100 gigawatt hours of announced in construction and in operation projects. As a simple case study, there's a 400 megawatt hour battery in Dalian, China, that has run for now two years, has been an incredibly successful case study with very high availability, great round trip efficiency, and doing all the different duties to get revenue, including Black Start all the way through to arbitrage. So why is AVL positioned to participate in this market, and why might we be thinking about a multi-pronged strategy? On the upstream side, we have a tier one asset. That's why I've joined AVL. I really do have a critical metals background, a processing background, and what we have here is good geology. And we've now, in, since February, merged with our neighbors and created what we think is one of the most, if not the most advanced primary producing projects in the world. We're based in Western Australia, which really does matter because Currently, 60% of the world's vanadium comes from China and another 15% comes from Russia. Having a tier one asset in Western Australia will be important and if we're going to enable this supply chain, this is a great place to do it and we've got a low cost producing opportunity here that can be developed in the near term. On the midstream side, we are established producers. You can go to Perth and see our facility. We are qualifying with reputable battery manufacturers around the world to be a first point of contact for electrolyte supply. So we already are established there and we believe you can scale the midstream and the downstream independent as we continue to progress the upstream to FID and beyond. On the downstream side, I'm gonna step through today some of the partnerships that I think take that business from what it is currently, which is a business with a six year track record of deploying vanadium flow batteries in the Australian context with really um, credible customers to a gigawatt hour utility scale type operation where we can deploy utility scale batteries. The upstream side in, in quick synopsis, we're seeking to develop a mine 50 kilometers south of Mikathera. This is a simple open pit operation with magnetic separation as the concentration process. This is all stuff we do day in and day out in Western Australia. We will then haul a concentrate to near Geraldton where we will convert to vanadium oxides importantly at low operating cost and at high quality, useful in batteries. And then we then have a final metal product that we can transport anywhere. Our ideal outcome is we actually create a scenario where that is ending up in batteries in Australia. We then can convert to electrolyte in, in Perth and that's the final step before we have the battery. On the upstream side, in terms of catalyst, <laughs> keep a lookout for where we've got our shoulders to finalizing all our permitting we are working closely with government grant opportunities and we're pushing to get financing and offtake completed in the not too distant future. That means we're a viable near-term producer. On the midstream side, again, we're qualifying with a lot of the best manufacturers in the world. This is a very established technology and we're seeking to get that credibility with the vanadium flow battery manufacturers that have been producing these batteries for well over a decade. To give a practical example of the downstream side, here you can see at Nova Nickel, where I used to work, we've got a standalone power station um, coupled with vanadium flow batteries. So you see solar plus battery is a great solution. Um, that's under commissioning as we speak, a small but important step in the right direction to prove to clients that this is a great outcome. And a great customer of ours, uh, Horizon, I think this is the first commercial project signed in WA for sure. We are deploying a battery with them and Horizon would tell you that they see a really great opportunity to deploy this technology throughout their network. In terms of the downstream becoming real and bigger and scalable, 
this is what we think is required. Now, these are the steps we need to take, and these are all advanced discussions, but we really want to share our thinking around how that downstream side can come together, start growing as we bring our upstream capacity online. Importantly, we think what breaks the dam wall is the conversations we're having with those energy customers in places like Victoria, who need long duration energy storage and typically have a preference not to deploy balance sheet, but actually sign uh, contracts where electrons can be told in and out of a battery. And importantly, it's a battery that's something like eight to 12 hours. When an energy offtake can happen in a business like ours, where you're a metals company moving into energy, I think that will get everyone's attention. So we're working really hard to make that a reality. Importantly, beside that, to do the battery story, you need land access. And we're in advanced discussions with land access opportunities that we think are unique to vanadium flow batteries that can give competitive energy cost outcomes. And because of the lack of flammability and other reasons, we think flow batteries can end up in land packages that other batteries cannot, and we're gonna keep putting our shoulder to making those real. In terms of the VFB funding side, we're in advanced discussions with other parties who are happy, more than happy, and we're getting more and more confident that that will happen. If there's an offtake there, the funding is actually there. That's giving us confidence to continue to get behind this opportunity. And last but not least, we need technology partners. We are not reinventing the wheel. This is not an R&D exercise. This is proven tech, and we will partner with proven manufacturers who have long-term installations and proven technology. And we will need EPC partners as we continue to deploy these batteries, which people like me are very familiar with and will continue to partner well with into the future. In summary, why, what is the investment thesis here today? We're in a market that's changing rapidly. You're in a declining steel world, but at the same time, you've got vanadium units going into batteries, climbing exponentially in places like China and elsewhere. That's changing the world of vanadium as we speak, and we think there's an inflection point coming as we transition to being a battery metal as opposed to a steel alloy metal. The high metal content of VFBs means there's a really unique value chain there. There's a simple supply chain which is comprised of making oxides, making electrolyte, which we're already doing, and putting it in a battery. A battery which is comprised of tanks, pumps, piping, and stack technology, which is all straightforward to deploy in Australia. And we can do that with very high local content, probably up to 85% local content in a battery story. Of course, underpinning all of this is the world-class tier one asset that we have, and this doesn't work at scale unless you have the vanadium supply, and we intend to maximize leverage through this blue ocean strategy. So keep an eye out for good catalysts upcoming on the upstream side, and lots of good catalysts in terms of partnering and other opportunities as we continue to show that the vanadium flow battery opportunity is real and that we have competitive advantage there. Thank you.